This is the fourth video in a series on creating custom chart modifiers. So in previous videos we've shown you how we created code to implement a simple rollover modifier, to implement zooming and panning with the mouse, um, zooming with the keyboard, and now what we're going to do is we're going to show you how you make a legend control using the chart modifier API. So just to recap, um, the chart modifier base has got lots of properties and methods which al allow you to access the parent surface, um, as well as getting notification about mouse move, mouse down, etc., um, and whether the point has uh, um, mouse has left or entered the the parent surface, etc. So taking a look at our example, what we have got is we, we've got a legend control up here showing bid and offer, but um, the data source for this is actually a custom modifier. A lot of people who contact us say, I, I want to add some extra data with my legend, or I want to have this, or I want to have that. And the answer is often simple. It's often create a custom chart modifier. So in the code, what we've done is we've declared a side chart legend control and we're binding it to legend modifier legend data um, but this time instead of using the built-in legend modifier we're, we're creating a custom one so let's have a quick look at the simple legend modifier like all the others in our example the simple legend modifier inherits chart modifier base um, and what we have done here is we are overriding on parent surface rendered this method is called every single time the chart is redrawn whether it be um, an axis visible range change or um, some data has changed or zooming or panning or anything at all even a property change and every time the chart renders what we do is we call this method get series infos if you recall from our documentation the side chart legend binds to a chart data object which has a collection of series info so we declare a dependency property as well uh, called legend data in the get series info uh, method, we're passing in some renderable series and then we're iterating over them. And each of them, we are performing a hit test at a specific point. And what we're doing is we're deliberately passing in the width of the modifier surface. If you recall from our other videos, the side chart surface is this element here, but the modifier surface is the grid line element in the center. So by passing in the width as our x value, what we're doing is we're basically saying perform a hit test exactly at this vertical line, the right edge of the chart. This will always get you the latest values in the series if they exist. And we're going to call this extension method here, renderable series get series info. And what this does is it converts a hit test result into a series info. And we're storing the series info in the observable collection here. If you go to our documentation, you can see the series info members. So just remember that the legend control wants to bind to a legend data object or a chart data object, uh, which is basically a collection of series infos. If you have a look at this series info uh, on our documentation, you'll see what kind of properties it's got. So the basic series info has got X value and Y value. Uh, it also exposes the renderable series, series color, series name, um, and the data series index. This is the index of the data series, um, uh, index on the data series, sorry, that was the, the, the hit test value. Now it's also important to note that we have a number of other series info classes. So there's also XY series info and the members for this, there's, there's actually no members on this because XY series info just inherits directly series info. Um, but if you have an XYZ data series, then you're gonna get an XYZ series info that has a Z value. If you have an open, high, low, close series, you're gonna get these values as well. So basically this is what the series info exposes and um, you can bind to these values in, uh, in the view. So, Whenever the chart renders, we get our series infos by performing a hit test and converting to his series info. And then we say legend data dot series info is equal to this. If you wanted to include any additional information in the chart legend, anything other than what we've done by default, I would recommend that you use this technique. And instead of binding to series info, you, you have some derived class and store your additional 
information in there. Now back to the view, all that we do here is we have a side chart legend and we just bind to the legend modifier. There's no need to even do this. I mean, you could just have an items control and you could expose, uh, instead of exposing a chart data of you would expose a collection of any class you like as long as it's a, a view model type class and then bind to it in um, in um, in the view with an items control. So I hope that demonstrates another powerful aspect of our chart modifier API. So in four short videos we've shown you how to make a rollover, how to zoom and pan with the mouse, how to zoom with the keyboard, and how to drag and also um, how to create custom legends.